Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it this far. Episode nine. We're almost in I, double digits. I am surprised we have all been committed this far. And have more fans now, which is, I guess, the goal. I guess that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed Still to Still blowing my mind. More fan. What is John doing? I was just playing, putting my pants off. <laughs> okay. Taking them off. I yeah. love that I was uh, I was at my um I was at my brother in law's house last night and I see that seemingly unknown's on live and I'm like, oh no. Oh yeah. So then I get I get on and then Brent's on there with John talking. And then I made a joke that said, you know, it's funny that Brent has a shirt on and John shirtless. And then I <laughs> then I get off then I got off of it. I, I had stuff to do, so I, I didn't stay and watch the live. And then later on I saw someone tag them in a picture where Brent had his shirt off too. <laughs> yeah, it started off with me just singing uh man of war like skid row songs and then he wrote a comment what are you drinking and i'm like well he thought i was drinking like these tall boy bud lights i'm like no i'm, I, I'm not full white trash uh part and then and then he just jumped on and we started talking about from COVID 19 to touring to uh shirtless and that's what he does shirtless <laughs> so then last night i get i get a text at 2 a.m my time that just says, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. No text. And then I just put, because I actually woke up my wife. And I started laughing because it was like, we hadn't texted in like five hours. And then literally at 2 a.m. I get, I'm ready. Yeah. And then yeah, we're I trying woke, to wake Paul up. I woke my laugh. I woke my wife up laughing. And then John goes, she can be a guest. And I said, that'll never happen. I said, well, yes. Yeah, yeah, that'll happen. It's sarcastically. And I said, on a scale of one to Nicholas Cage in Vegas, how drunk are you? And he goes, oh, Nick Cage <laughs> went to bed two hours ago. And then he said, I am the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> oh, God. And then we kept trying to wake you up and you just weren't having it. Some of us have to work normal jobs here, people. You were having no, you were having no part of it. No. I think Paul is having a nightmare or a dream. <laughs> if I did, I wish I could remember him so I can ask you about it because I don't. <laughs> That's true. I, I thought it was great. I, I thought that was a good text exchange. Um, also, last night, I got a photo in my brother's text. It's National Sibling Day today on the day that we're recording this, by the way. Happy Sibling oh, Day. All or right. whatever dumb money day it is. Or, you know, every day is like a day. National popsicle Yeah, there's a national day. everything. Yeah. Pizza national, day. National popsicle day. Oh, yeah. Um so in my in my brother's text, um, I got a, a, a photo of my nephew, and I'm gonna I'll I'll get JR to put it in. Um full mullet. Oh yeah, like saw it. Bangs in the front, party in the back, lightning background, hard, <laughs> so sick. Virginity rocks hoodie. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what else you need in life. Like I like I was moist and I didn't even have coming to fuck your bee for sure. Yeah, like, dude, that's yeah. like that's uh that's uh and I tagged him on Instagram, so I'm wondering like he's uh, he listen, he's underage, so let's like you know, let's let's pump yeah, the brakes, yeah. people. Oh my God. All, yeah. Not a, ladies, not all at once. You know what I'm saying? Gentlemen, need, all at once. <laughs> we don't need a we don't need a teacher, uh we don't need a teacher a teacher student thing going on like we've seen in the past. Um get canceled. But it made me it made me start thinking about something. Um at, at his age, I was I was knee deep in it. Did, Did you have a mullet there? Right. I didn't have a no. mullet. No, but I, I had a rat tail till I was probably like nine years old. Really? I support yeah. the rat tail. I, I got, I'll, I'll send JR a photo. I got to start writing things down. I need to send JR photos up. Cause I never send them. Uh, True. Hold on, I like uh, that picture that went around the tour bus or last run. I didn't know if you were either Kenny Wade Shepard or you, cause you had your long <laughs> kind of like, the, at one point in his life, Zach, not only obviously played the guitar, but he had hair like a chick from legally blonde. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> it was my hair. My hair used to be beautiful. I don't know what happened, but it used to be beautiful. I mean, it was luxurious. Honestly, it's always been really thin. I've always had thin, like Barbie thin hair, but um, it, it used to be very much luxurious and Pantene Pro V and all that. But so it made me start thinking about what something I wanted to talk to you guys about. <laughs> Pantene. <laughs> uh, when did you when did you lose your virginity? To a human. <laughs> To a woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't. That uh, that doesn't. I don't care about to a human though. To a human though, for sure. 
Yeah, we, just, Tim, <laughs> we don't we don't need we don't need Tim the British tree creeping into this, we, this episode. Right. Uh <laughs> ugh, I gotta think here. Fuck. You gotta you don't think. Know? Oh, I think this dude well, knows and talks about you it. He's gotta think, think about it. Well, okay, why do you think? Fifteen. I was I was fifteen. Okay. I was fifteen. It was an early release day from school. We were in high school. It was an early release day from school. Hold on, let, me take my sh- let me take my shirt off while you're telling yeah, the story. Yeah, it's, it's going to get Wait, wait, Paul, 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 Paul. Tell me, what was the double wood rock song on the radio at the time? Uh, it might have been a shine down. It, it might have been a shine down song. <laughs> God bless. You're older than me, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm younger than you, but uh, 15. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be 34 this year. So when were you born? 87. Okay, so do quick do, math because do I don't remember what year no, no, it was. No, no, I don't need that. I, don't, I know how. I know what year that was. Um, what uh, what month? Do you remember what month it was? Oh God, uh, early release. It might have been in January. That could have been Lip Biscuit because I had lies. started dating the girl early in the school year, so we're like halfway through into about January, a little over halfway through. Well. Always on Shit. time with the Shanti was the number one uh, uh, top forty song. Okay. A literal well, bagger, literal bagger. That yeah. is a banger for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, so fifteen early release from high school. Um, Savage yeah. Garden. Yeah, for sure. You Truly know, madly deeply. By yeah. Savage <laughs> I want to stand with. You. Great song. Um, but what about you, John? Uh, what rock song? What are we talking about? No, when did you? Oh, you were 15. Rock song. <laughs> 15. 15. Yes. And you're younger than all of us, or you're in the middle? I turned 36 next week. Okay. So you're, I'm the youngest out of all of us. Then. You're the youngest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I've lived a life. Okay. <laughs> I feel you. And you were 15. The, the girl was. What was her I name? Love, I love you have to say that. Okay, so you can say it. Mine, mine was Melissa. My first. No, like, I love how we had to joke that. Oh, the, the girl, the, the girl I was with. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't female. <laughs> yeah, the Sibian robot, uh, flesh doll. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying to think. She was. Geez, she was. Two. She was four or five years older than I was. Damn, John. Damn, I think she. I think man. she was eighteen. It was turning nineteen within six months later. You could do that though in two thousand three, bro. You could. That was fair game. To, yeah. To well, now, she was. Now she was. Yeah. But uh, here's the thing, though. I went back and looked at this person, or I not. I could care less because it was so long ago. But on LinkedIn, you get like these people sending like messages or like, "Hey, I think you know this person." Well, yeah. I just LinkedIn wasn't there. around back then, so don't ask like you. You got laid off LinkedIn <laughs> at fifteen. No, I'm saying recently, oh, okay. like, right. like last year, I'm like, going bro. through like trying to clear out some of these <laughs> bullshit accounts or whatever, and I see her, and man, and I don't mean this. As, Careful what you say right now. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Whatever's I don't want to next. I don't want to say anything that's probably it's censored out of here, but she did not take care of herself. And I don't know if there's health reasons or uh, she... She didn't age uh, gracefully. Right. Or she stopped. She never stopped eating Russell Stover's candies. We wish her well. <laughs> you know what, yeah. man? All my, all my early ones... Um, all right, hold up. on, hold on. How old were you? 13. Yo, so Woo! I was thinking about uh, the girl's name was Amanda Adams. Um, I, I was I supposed to give the last name? I probably wasn't. I wouldn't have given the last <laughs> name, but okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, still put Amanda together. Amanda Adams, <laughs> still, still put together to this day. By the way, um, so she's actually a dude now. You know, because I was already oh. playing. I was already playing <laughs> shows at thirteen. You know what I mean? Like I, it was right before I got signed. So it was I got signed the day after my birthday, um, when I turned fourteen. So uh, this was like summer. Um, 90, whatever, 90, whatever it was. Um, so I was, yeah, I would have been 96. So I played a, I played a show downtown. There's this festival called the Crossroads Festival, which is like a big rock blues festival all along Beale street. Like every club was full or whatever. And, um, so 
on the way home, her mom came with us. My dad drove me. Her mom came with us. Her mom and my dad weren't doing anything. And my dad was single at the time. Her mom was single at the time, but nothing was going on there. Dude, she was like, she said she was tired. She was like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to lay down. So she, my dad had a Jeep Grand Cherokee. She laid down in the back of my dad's Jeep Grand Cherokee while I was like, and I was like, in the, <laughs> that, was the, that was the creepiest laugh. That was a job yeah. laugh that Paul just did. <laughs> Yo, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> He's like, Zach, why are you sitting on the joystick? What? <laughs> so I was in the seat behind my dad's seat. So, you know, he couldn't really, he could see my head, but he couldn't see anything. So, um, she lays her head down in my lap and like, she like puts her like hoodie over her head and starts like doing th- the thing. Wait, like, time out. Yeah. Right behind your dad. Her mom and my dad are in the front seat. Swear to God. What is this? You saw this girl's number? <laughs> I, I think Jesus. I'm friends with her on Facebook. Um, oh. Uh, oh. So starts, so starts doing whatever. And like, I'm like, you know, this is my first time ever having <laughs> my penis inside anyone's mouth. Ever. The, uh, the oh warmest God. thing my penis has felt at, up to this point was the bathtub. You know what right. I mean? So like or, or that uh, bowl of oatmeal you made the night before. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like sitting up, I'm like sitting there being like, yo, this is like, and I'm trying not to like, you know, at this point I probably sound like Mickey Mouse if I'm moaning or ma- I'm like, <laughs> you know, like making it. Yeah. It's like someone stepping on Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like so, like you stepped on Prince's foot. Oh. <laughs> How did we get here in this conversation? <laughs> so, so if I'm like, so if I'm making a noise, yeah. So it's like my you know, mom and dad, not my mom and dad, her mom, my dad, up there, you know, whatever they they're playing whatever music's on at the time. Uh, you know, I'm in the back. <laughs> yeah, making those noises. So. I, at this point, I'm like, and then so oh my dad God. has my I, uh, her mom asked my dad. She's like, well, he can spend the night if he wants. She was like, I'll I'll make him sleep on the couch or whatever. I'm like, you're like, yes, 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 yes. Dad, please, dad, please, dad, please, yes, yes, dad, absolutely, dad, 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 <laughs> dad, dad, dad. So, so by the way, he's he's like, all right, that's fine, because they lived like not far from where we lived. We lived in Nutbush, and they lived right around the corner. So <laughs> Nutbush, uh. So anyway, get out of the car. My dad says I can spend the night there. I get out of the car, shut the door, tell my dad bye. She, uh, my girlfriend goes inside. My, her mom shuts the door and she's like, uh, next time, try not to show that you're getting your dick sucked like on your face. I was like, wait, who said this? Her mom knew the entire time. The entire time. How long was it till you got with the mother? I was going to say, did you end Never up having happened. sex with both of them? That Never night? happened. I definitely, I definitely feel like her mom, by the way, has since passed on. So I'm not going to speak disrespectfully, um, sure. but her mom uh, was a, was an old school, um, band aid is I guess a proper way to say that. Um, okay. hung out, hung out with, with such bands as Aerosmith and, and many others right. back in the day. So and Rhino, her, from WWE. <laughs> Rhino from WWE. So we're walking inside. Her mom was like, how was it? And I was like, amazing. She was like, all right, good. And I was like, "What? This is your? Th- or, by the way, daughter's the same age as me. What the, f- dude? What? Yeah, listen, I, I don't, I'm not here to judge people's families. Wow. I'm, I'm here to get what I came for at 13 years old. Okay, but so like, that night, uh, that night, by the way, I did not have to sleep on the couch. I'm sure you did. That was that was that was the first that was the first go at it. Here's and, wow. <sighs> okay, I, it, despite age and first time, I don't know if I can get a fucking hard on with." parents sitting literally a couple feet in front of me bro at That's, 13 years old you can get a hard uh, on with your grandmother in the room making stuff in <laughs> i promise you you get a hard dude you, you, you can get a hard on if a washing machine's too loud at 13 bro 13 13 is an immediate hard on 13 is is the is the is the blue chew of like human interaction You're did getting, you ever tell your dad about this oh yeah he didn't know though. I was like, yo, her mom knew. He was like, I didn't know. He's like, I figured. He's like, her mom was kind of slutty. All right. So hold on. Let me, let's go. I want to go back real quick. In one of our first couple episodes, we were talking about being able to eat, talk on the phone, and all that. Like, are you able to focus getting roadhead on the road? Uh I well, have a, hold on. I have a Tesla. Let me ask, let me ask, I was gonna say, let me ask a normal person that has to drive their actual car. 
John. John drives a Fiat, bro. Oh, yeah. Right. Second no, God, I'm asking the two pe- worst people to ask. God damn it. Well, are we talking like a car, like an ATV, a scooter? Who's blowing uh, driving John? a vehicle. Who's, who's blowing John in his car? Brad Williams? <laughs> Nobody's like... <laughs> You're fucked up for that John, one. John drives a Fiat, dude. <laughs> Actually, you know what? His girlfriend could easily do it because she's four foot six. Oh my god! She weighs ninety pounds with her backpack on. <laughs> with oh my Jesus! And all of her books in it. So, needless to say, you guys can easily drive uh, and not worry about road what distractions. About you? Can you? Are you distracted if you're getting roaded? I get too distracted, man. Like yeah, I'm already, I'm, ba- I'm already an aggressive driver on the road. Yeah. Man, that just makes if I'm getting aggressive. if I'm getting any kind of action, I'm fucking swerving everywhere. I'm cutting people off. And now, could you focus if you were eating a Big Mac at one, cranking up the volume on the uh, cassette player thing, playing the new Five Finger while getting action? While not five, fin- not five Finger, but Bad Wolves for sure. <laughs> I love that you're wearing a very teasing shirt, Paul. I love how you skipped over what I just said, Zach. No, I uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Look at John. Um, John knows exactly hey. what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I'm not going to say what this is. Careful, you only won't get a you only get a phone thrown at your head. Um. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh yeah, don't say what that is. Um, I'm not. So yeah, so I for me like I yeah that was it. I was 13. It was amazing. Right. And then life life began. <laughs> amazing for me. life life began for me after that. Wow. That's so a, this wow. weekend, I uh, I got I got <laughs> go ahead, I got, go ahead, John, take it away. <laughs> no, this actually ties it perfectly. But I'm astounded that we actually led to this path. Uh, so I got a bunch Somebody's of messages. Roadhead right now. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. John, somebody Play, just pulled into John's yard. It was yeah. his dad. <laughs> Play Skid Row. Uh, so <laughs> your dad's getting roadhead right now. Johnny just <laughs> missed the driveway by like eleven feet. <laughs> is that Steak Pliskid? Who is that? Uh, so. A bunch of people messaged me to say, hey, there's some weird fetishes out there. After we were talking about the woman that was... Um, oh, no. Tim, with Tim. The woman that was eating out the seedless grapes with her... Whatever. Uh, so I looked up another fetish. Oh, no. Um, now, so I'm going st- to mm. ask this question first. Do you guys believe in ghosts? Yes. Okay. How about um, you, Paul? I believe in something. I don't know what the fuck it is. So me and my wife were talking about this. Side note, me and my wife were talking about this, and my wife again very religious, and I am too. But yeah, I believe in there's like there's like good ghosts. My wife thinks all ghosts are demons, and they're like all like like she doesn't believe that you can be trapped between one or the other, right? Like they're all bad, like purgatory, like, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. She thinks that it's all they're all bad ghosts, and I'm like, well, I, I disagree with that. Oh, well, maybe Let's she'll like though. this. She'll maybe like this topic. That are you guys aware of? Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't fucking listen to this. Are you guys aware <laughs> of spectrophilia? What? Say I'm that gonna again? guess. I'm gonna guess this is some like slimer shit where like you have sex with a ghost. Slimer. Spectro, <laughs> spectrophilia, a fetish or a condition where people display a strong sexual attraction to ghosts and spirits, sometimes succubi or incubuses. And there is a woman that is a so-called expert. Same lady as uh, the tree lady. Yeah. The sister-in-law. And they literally talk about where people could come to orgasm and have these rape scenarios in their nightmares and dreams where ghosts are ravaging their bodies. Okay. I'll, I, I say, mean, I, <laughs> I'll say this. This makes more sense to me than the tree thing. Yeah, yeah but no, that, I, the tree thing is a physical I, thing. Yeah, but the Co- at least at, at least the at least the ghost thing has like some sort of like spirit to it or like a vibe to it, like a tree. I've never bought. But you can a tree put like something from a tree. tree inside you. You can't put like a magic ghost wiener Correct. inside you. You can't put off like an incubus's penis okay, but you're in your not hand touching, or mouth. If you have like a wet dream when you're sleep, you're not touching anything that yeah, you know I, of. I, yeah, I don't know. Well, man. That could I be mean, ghosts. What if, dude? What if we just figured out that wet dreams are just ghost blowjobs? Yeah, but here's the Have thing. you ever come I from mean, a ghost blowjob? I don't Where know. does the cub go? <laughs> I don't know. He says. On you. <laughs> yeah, the cub just floats in this empty like spatial cranium that just lavitates all around this. <laughs> so they're not so they're not swallowing. <laughs> no. There's just little tadpoles just flying ghost, around the room. Ghosts are spitters. <laughs> ghost ghosts are spitters for sure. But how do you know if you are getting head from a ghost, how do you know if it's a guy or girl? Ghost. 
feeling real, really rough around the if chin, the, I guess. I don't the, know. If the bus is moving, bro, it ain't. Remember. <laughs> hey, just, as long as there's no eye contact made, I guess it doesn't really count. I, I just Slimer, don't. I bet Slimer gives k- killer head, though. If, oh, is, for sure. What no famous teeth, ghost just that would tone? you want to have no, sex Slimer with? did have teeth. Yes, he did. He did. Slimer he had did, teeth. Right. They were yeah. yellow as shit. But no but teeth action. You're not feeling any teeth here. No, no. Yeah, you know mouth. what? You know what? That Slimer doing core of the cob on your Johnson here and just start fucking <laughs> taking kernels off. Out of all the Taking famous ghosts, <laughs> out of all the famous ghosts, TVs, movies, uh, Ghost Face Killer, maybe, uh, which one would you rather have sex with? <laughs> ghost, the band. <laughs> <laughs> the band ghost. Um, I'm gonna go. Right. I'm gonna go with. Well, Casper's too young. Yeah, oh, that's, that's by so far the cutest. <laughs> John's reaction was the best. <laughs> by far the cutest ghost. Um, but and the friendliest. I'm gonna go with like Annabelle or something. It was Annabelle a ghost or a doll? Nah, a doll. she was a doll. So yeah. now you're you're so getting more you're into, into like the the flashlight, like pocket pussy stuff. I'm gonna go with Slimer. Interesting. That's the only famous ghost I know other than Casper and Casper. Chris Hansen shows up. You start messing around with Casper. How about dude. Patrick Swayze in the movie Ghost? <sighs> Patrick Swayze in the movie Ghost for Sway- sure. I was gonna say I'm going I'd, Swayze, I'd pick Swayze dude. for sure. If I could do recreate anything or have something done to me, I'd want to have Patrick Swayze's ghost wrap his arms around me and put me behind oh, like okay. a potter, pottery wheel. Listen, so, if I ever if wow. I ever chose to make love to a man, I'm making love to point break Patrick Swayze anyway. Hundred percent. Okay, Alive. so here. I have a good question here. Yeah. If this fetish is a thing, is it considered cheating? That's no. okay. I Not if it's a ghost. So Zach says, no, it's not considered cheating. John? I, He's got research. Well, well, He's like, I got a lot of stuff here. here. I'm, check, my, uh, <laughs> check, my, check my notes here. So is it considered just, cheating? Zach says, no, it's not considered cheating if you're having sex with a ghost. But here's the thing. How could something be here cheating if half the population doesn't believe in that entity, right? So I'm going to go with no. Let me just send a quick let text me, let real me, let quick. Me, let me hear. <laughs> not cheating. Uh, right. <laughs> You imagine a ghost gangbang? Like <laughs> plenty of room. Night, Why are cheating. we back to the gangbang with you all the time? Just think how many ghosts could be in a gangbang. All right. Well, here's the, here's the next question then. You could you could. What hum- are you eating at a ghost gangbang? What's what are the hors d'oeuvres at a ghost gangbang? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe s'mores. Maybe. Uh, Do you say hors d'oeuvres? Yeah. Yo, my Absolutely. brother said hors my brother said hors d'oeuvres last night. My brother in law. We went out to dinner last night. This Italian place. And that we're ordering, and he's like, uh, "What hors d'oeuvres do you want?" I go, "What the fuck are we, man? We're like a French restaurant. This is this is a pizza spot." Bro. I feel, I feel, you know, it's a French calamari, and let's uh, move on. We don't, yeah, need, <laughs> we don't need to bring French words into this. Dude. Right. Hors d'oeuvres. Give me the blooming onion and two loaves of wheat bread. God damn it. Hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> um, uh, let me let me read this stat here though. Okay, go ahead. Folklorist David J. Hufford, a real guy, believes that up to fifteen percent of people experience being assaulted in their sleep by an unknown entity at some point in their lives. So this is assault. Right. And this doesn't include this. This is under this. This is ghost rape where ghost rape deals with different issues though, is where some people try and summon a demon or a ghost, like a Ouija board to these other entities where if they, if they bring that demon in, it's not considered ghost rape because they allowed it to their body. I mean, just, I mean, just think about it this weekend, you guys, and just oh come back yeah, I'll Monday. casually just be like, hmm. I just don't. There's dude, there's so much fetishes out there that make no sense. No, is that sense. a fetish though? Ah, uh, ghost sex? Yeah, I mean, I would say <laughs> not a lot of people sex. do it. <laughs> do I can't wait to. How do you know? How do you know? Hat that says ghosts or spitters. <laughs> Uh, hold yeah. on. That's the first, first fucking <laughs> next merchandise item. Ghosts are spitters. Pog. Ghosts are spitters. A pog Noted. in the shape of Casper with like a big glory hole for it. No, off. not Casper. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm how, old is, how old is Casper? I mean, then or now? I mean, well, I guess he stays the same age. I, a kid. Did he? Did, did that kid die? Like, what's the backstory of Casper? Because I, I don't know what the was he murdered? Die like. Old day, like Bro, I gotta go tw- watch. Casper's twelve years old. Let's yeah, let's leave Casper out of this. Let's leave Casper out of this. Old Casper. I don't know how old. Uh, I mean, I don't know how he died. Right. Like, how I do you can tell you? Hold on. <laughs> he's just, 
All right. Our, so Catherine the Friendly Ghost is the protagonist of the famous famous studios theatrical animated cartoon series. He is a pleasant look. Okay, the character. But well, let's let's get his background here. Um, what's his? Uh, doesn't say. Hold on. Oh, okay. I, I guess well, I'll, I can look it up. Hold on. Oh wait, <laughs> wait, wait. What year did Casper die? He died in 1995. Okay. He just couldn't live in a world without Kurt Cobain anymore. Heard that. Um, I don't really care. Uh, let's see. How do you, can you hear my kid screaming in the background? Oh, Is that yeah. a ghost or your kid? That's my kid. Um, kid about see. to be a ghost. <laughs> How did Casper the ghost die? <laughs> According to the film, Casper was a 12 year old boy living in Whipstaff Manor with his inventor father inventor. Jeez. Until he died from pneumonia after playing out in the cold until it was past nightfall. That was right. a, that's, Gosh. that's a control thing. That's to get kids to come inside when it's dark. Outside. Right. Yeah. That's what that was. Manipulation 100%. right there. That's yeah, fine. 100%. They're like, Hey, listen, you want to be like this kid? Bald, a bald you ghost. You want to turn into a ghost? You want to turn into a bald ghost that looks like sperm, kind of? <laughs> if you're a dude that dies, do, does your ghost go back to, it's like your your prime? Like, do you have your, you, does your, your ghost cock the healthiest it's ever been when you become a ghost? Or does it go back what would to be like, your, What would be your healthiest ghost cock then? I would say probably, I think mid, I'm mid-20s? Uh, 32, 33, but like right now I feel really amazing. So if I became a ghost now, I wouldn't mind taking this spectral cock for sure. So are you asking if you're if you die? So if, if you, if you die fires, with a certain right. length length peen, when you turn into a ghost, you have the same peen, right? No, or just get, or, like, or or the you know the like how do you if your ghost comes back when you watch these stupid movies or television shows? The ghost always comes back as this person. Are they in their prime or are they at the time of their death? That ghost. If I could pick. I don't think you go back to your prime. There's no way. You probably just that's probably where you are, right? Like right. You, you how, your ghost yeah, okay. is, the, is the age that you die. I wonder here now too, because if all the ghosts kind of mingle together, like if there's like a ghost like a swingers club or whatever. Right. And um, a ghost gangbang. Ghost gangbang. I yeah. wonder if um that like when you go there and you're like, you're like a, say like, you're like a 2018 ghost and you go and you're like making time with like a 1950s ghost. And then she starts to like ghostly go down on you. She's like, Whoa, you don't have any hair on your. <laughs> right. Oh my God. There's no landing strip. Where are we? <laughs> you know, cause they're like, if you died in the fifties, bro, that's Bush. What was that Disney movie? So was there a ro- rooster goes to heaven. Rock a doodle do. Or what was what? Damn. I remember that. Was I, it Rock a Doodle Doo? Where the yes. animal go? Uh-huh. It's not, it's, yeah, it was. It's not my dog. It's not dogs go to heaven. It's Rock a Doodle Doo. The rooster has to like do something in heaven, doesn't he? What the fuck is that movie? Uh, speaking of this, you know what? This is a great segue that I was thinking about. Uh, yep, live. Rock a Doodle Doo, dude. Yeah, what, how, oh, yeah. 1991 story, live action animated musical comedy film, uh, Sylvia Bluth, loosely based on Edmund Ross's 1910 comedy play. Uh, Rock a Doodle Doo was directed. Okay, blah, blah, blah. the film features the voices. Of, okay, Jesus, uh, God, yes, dude, this is the one I know exactly what you're talking about. I love it. I gotta check my roast. Be right back. <laughs> I gotta check my roast. Speaking of rock a doodle do, let me check my roast. Speaking <laughs> of rock a doodle do, I got this chicken in the oven that did go to heaven. As I well. guess right now is a good time to uh, to thank our sponsors, Zach. If you want to thank them, go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, um, uh, Spear Talk Podcast, Spear Talk Podcast, <laughs> a podcast spot. about security. Uh, <laughs> So generous of him to give us a thousand dollars. Thank you to Spirit Talk. Uh, also, uh, our sponsors really are fans because they bought picks. So, yes, that, those are our sponsors right now. We still don't have any. Um, and after this podcast, I think we just put the nail in the coffin that we're never going to have any. Yeah, uh, maybe Ghost Hunter. I wish we can go on Ghost Hunters now. Dude, though I wish I wish that there was a meeting about like uh, I just picture a meeting room of like them talking about our podcast, like a certain sponsor. I'm like, Oh, let's, uh, let's take a listen to the podcast and, uh, and <laughs> uh, see nope. what, see what and they, they literally click play in a boardroom full of people. And they're like, ghosts are spitters. Like, what are they talking about? <laughs> and moving on, who else should we think about well, sponsoring? Well you, well, you guys aren't getting this Clorox endorsement, you know? So <laughs> anyway, what John was talking about, like if you die with, if you die, you with, could with, use Clorox though, to wipe off your cub, the ghosts don't eat. Okay, sorry. I just jumped in late. My bad. Uh, if Clorox was listening, they might be into that. 
Oh God. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Okay. <laughs> You know what I was thinking about this week? This is this is a very John thing to come up with, but I thought about this last time. Oh, I'm so afraid to hear what the <laughs> fuck you're gonna say now. So when John was talking about like if you if you had good dick and you die, do you keep the good dick? Why can't can, why can't we have like weather dick? And here's what I'm what saying. Do you mean? Here's what I'm saying by this, right? So you're like, listen, when you're, when you're talking to a girl, because they got I'm not single anymore, and I had to deal with that. You know what I mean? Sure. Like we you already know, had to like be like, oh yeah, it's this big. But what if you had weather dick and you're like, oh, it's six, but it feels like nine. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, it's 50 outside, but it feels like 48. Right. Yeah. Like, Yo, listen, my dick's six, but it feels like eight and a half. <laughs> right. It, it was, was a, a 40- cold day. Okay. <laughs> There's a 40% chance it's be really hard later. Dude, we need w- weather dick needs to be a thing. We need a weather. <laughs> we need a barometer. We need a weather barometer. Yes. For dick. So dudes are like, Yo, hey, listen, I'm not going to lie. It's five and a half, but I, but I throw it like a seven and three quarters on a 75, you know, dry heat. I'm Dude. feeling real good. Hey, I listen. thought you first said weathered and I'm like, are you talking like your dick looking like Jorge Posada's catcher's bit after a season? <laughs> like that's weathered as fuck. No, I mean, weather. We need like a barometer. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mike barometer Piazza's is feeling like, real good. <laughs> yeah. We need like a barometer where you're like, listen. I'm not going to lie, girl. When you're like back in the day, when you're like texting girls and you're like, you know, you're whatever you're doing, sending pictures of other people's dicks. Cause you didn't have tattoos. <laughs> right. yeah, didn't have tattoos or your dick was not tattoos. big enough. So make no it. way. Yeah, there's no, I got tattoos. I'm screwed either way. So, but you're like, listen, I'm not gonna lie, girl. It's five and a half, but I f- listen, if we're banging in Pennsylvania in February, it's still five and a half. If I fly you to Scottsdale, this thing feels seven and a half all day long. <laughs> mm-hmm. I Weather it. dick, dude. Weather dick. Weather dick. Five Field. feels like eight. What will we talk about next, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> the wind oh. chill and the wind chill is <laughs> dude, weather dick. I thought y'all were gonna appreciate that more. I I, 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 I know I, I, I appreciate it. it. Trust me. <laughs> like we our new workshop should be a thermostat with a dick that just gets <laughs> goes up. What, what if like you know sometimes instead, they're like instead of the windmill instead of like the rooster it's just a dick just <laughs> the dick going <laughs> it's, a <laughs> it's a cock vein it's a cock no, weather vein with a cock vein that's the thing though but what if it's backwards because sometimes like they'll be the 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 um weather guy would be like oh it's 80 but it feels like 75 so whatever like i have an eight but it feels like a six <laughs> <laughs> on today's broadcast <laughs> <laughs> cloudy with a chance of maybe eight and a half if you're lucky oh, i wonder if this one's called weather dick <laughs> no ghost spitters this, this episode's called ghost, ghost spitters, spitters. For sure. <laughs> well we're getting into this late but we know what john did this weekend paul what'd you do this weekend i guess it's still the weekend it's still the weekend where we now. haven't even gotten through you know a real man did you uh, listen to the weekend this weekend i did not listen to okay. the weekend this All weekend right. um Honestly, yesterday was kind of a bummer day. When people Why? hear this, well, when people hear this, it'll be Wednesday, but um, yesterday was Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't normally get emotional over celebrities dying. I'll be yeah. real. Because I have no emotional attachments to any of these people. I'm like, okay, that sucks. DMX dying, I'm going to be I'm gonna be real with you guys. Like, that put a real fucking damper on my entire day. Yeah. Like, I understand that. And I don't know if it's because that was one of the most influential hip hop artists at the time during my childhood um, that I remember the most about, but it for real, like last night I was like, damn, this one hits different than most anybody else. Like, I think for me, it's because we always, he was so open about his struggles with addiction and I hate seeing someone struggle and you can't do anything about it. And they came and they eventually succumbed to their fucking their habits, man. It's mm-hmm. super sad. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it goes back to what I was talking about last week though, when we just knew that he was in the hospital and he had, he had overdosed, you know, it was to be in the throes of it, right. To be in the throes of addiction. No, you have it yet. You're out there still trying to help other people and lift them up with positivity. Insane. Um, it's crazy. So I posted a tribute on my page and it got a couple of negative comments, which is fine. But then I, then I posted one on, on the, I posted the same one on the shinedown Facebook and just like 
just the creatures that came out and it's just like, they have something to say. So I posted this long comment today, like how I was like, you know, I'm disappointed in a lot of you. Like, you know, you're on the page of a band whose singer has struggled with addiction his whole adult life, mm-hmm. you right. know, and you're like, you're talking about addiction. Like it was like, Oh, this choice that this person made and blah, 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 fuck him. And I'm like, so I posted this really kind of nice comment. It was like, listen, like, you know, I see all you people on here, like complaining about, you know, all these other things, politicians are what's wrong with the world. This is what's wrong with the world. I'm like, no, we're, we are what's wrong with the world. It's us. Mm-hmm. It starts Correct. with us. We mm-hmm. got to be better humans and have some sort of empathy at some times and learn to forgive, you know, listen. And that's what I said. I said, this guy, no, I, di- I didn't come on here. The, I th- I'm not going to read the whole comment, but I, I was like, you know, I didn't come on here and say uh, rest in peace to a, to a saint or the Pope. So rest in peace no. to a rapper who lived a life and, and did things that he later apologized for in life. Right. You know, I, and I was like, listen, some of these people on here judging people have closets, have, have skeletons in their closet the size of fucking dinosaurs. Yeah, get the fuck out of here with that, yeah, man. That's like, the thing. <clears throat> and so the, I, I, I will read you one. So it was a really positive comment and it got, I mean, it got in five minutes had, you know, 2.7 thousand likes. The post actually, the DMX post that I made had like 9,000 shares. Right. And I was like, I, and I said, you know, whatever, for whatever, you know, reason of being a racist or ego, you guys going to come on here. And my problem, listen, if you want to comment on it yourself and say something, I understand that. But if you want to take, if you want to comment on someone else's positive comment and then be negative, right. that's what gets me off. So I wrote a very positive comment said, listen, we need to be better as humans. Like you guys are letting mm-hmm. me down. And some dude goes, not racist at all, but with your attitude, I just burnt your CDs and I will no longer buy your tickets. Good luck. So that that's after I just wrote a positive comment that everyone loved. That there was no right. negative comments. So this guy commented and I go, they still make CD burners, you clown. I go, how did you even type this on your razor phone? I saw that guy. He looks like he eats the Confederate flag for breakfast. That guy looks like a piece <laughs> oh, of shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but that's I all. Hate, it's I the, hate it's the negativeness. So anyway, you know, I I took the uh, you know I made a tribute to him because in my life that was one of the biggest you know, and it did it put me in a weird place yesterday. Uh, there you know, I've, there's only been a handful. I'm like Paul. Like I don't really I don't get emotional, but I also don't. What I don't understand is I do, I get pissed off at people who get mad at other people who care about celebrities dying. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to care. Like there, there's tons of people that die that I don't care about that I grew up knowing or whatever. But I posted this after Kobe died and, and people kind of try to shit on me for it because I said what I said was and I and I still stand by this to this day. And there's still a lady that has I believe has a Reddit even though I'm not a nerd so I don't know how to work Reddit. <laughs> um, so she made a whole Reddit post about this because a lady said, um. Cause I said, listen, I said, unless you have kids, you don't understand this pain. You can't, I go, it's nothing against you, but Time's you up. can't, it's not, it, it doesn't matter if it's your niece. Doesn't matter if it's your nephew, you physically can't understand this pain. Cause nothing, you're not a part of anything like that. Mm. There's not a person that has a piece of you in them. And so I said that, and this lady goes, well, I have cats. And I was like, I go, listen, I said, and I was like in a very emotional mood. I wasn't feeling like going at people. So I said, listen, I said, lady, I said, you're, I said, when you have kids holler at me and she's like, well, I can't have kids. I'm like, well, you know what, bitch? I didn't know that. Well, who cares? So who cares so about this, her? So, so this, oh, I could me, we go back and forth. So this other lady makes a whole post about how I was insensitive to infertility. I'm like, you're a fucking clown. I didn't say so like that. everything you were talking about and just threw it out the window and made my, this subject anyway, completely fucking different. And, and right. 100, but because they have to make it about themselves. That's the, that's my biggest problem with social media is the people that come on, try to clown you on your page. And you know mm-hmm. me, man, like I, my comebacks are vicious and they are fierce. And so mm-hmm. when I come back at somebody and they're like, Oh, well that's rude. I'm like, I'm like, hold on. I don't know right. you. Daryl Johnson. I didn't go search your Facebook. You're here on my page. Yeah. Right. Forever, yeah. And you talk shit first and then I reply and then, Oh, I'm the one that's You're like the asshole fans. I'm the asshole. No. So anyway, it, that's neither here nor there. I don't want to get started mm-hmm. on that kind of stuff. So but my post, but the point of my post was maybe that celebrity or artist or actor or basketball player, maybe something that, that hit them at a time that they were going through. And that's why people, cling to it like Kobe. they resig- they resonate with with different celebrities or they feel like they're you know attached to that person in some way shape or form i get I, what you're saying i wrote a i wrote a, a piece um on michael jackson when he died and this is before everything had come out that mm-hmm. you know later or whatever and it got used by people magazine.com 
it was a, I thought it was very good. It was a very good post that I made. And I talked about the fact that like, think about, and it was the same thing with Kobe Bryant. Like think about the fact that how many people exist in the world where you can say one name and everyone in the world knows who it is. Everyone doesn't. Correct. I mean, from the caves of, of, of middle of you're the gonna world. You're going to know that you're going to know a person. You're going to you know, know if that I name. say Kobe, everybody knows who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. If I say MJ, they're going to either know Michael Jordan or Michael Jackson, but everybody knows who I'm talking about. Yep. So I'm like, you know, that's why people get upset by these things is because think about that. I go, you know, and I, when I, that post about, I'm, I know I'm going back and forth here. I'm being random. I know. But, um, and I said, you know, I, I go, people believed in Michael Jackson that didn't believe in God. Think about that. Right. Crazy. Think about the power of that. So when a celebrity dies, like I, I get mad at the people who get mad at people for caring. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. Hey man, maybe this, you know, listen, you know, the hardest three for me, Kobe was hard because of the kids thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, as a dad, you know, I, I cried one night all night, literally all mm-hmm. night long. I cried. Cause I was like, I can't imagine those moments, you know, and mm-hmm. when I'm headed to the studio to write with shine down, dude, I drive past that mountain twice a day, crazy twice a day. So, you know, <laughs> but the, the three that got me the most, you talk about DMX, that was, it, I, I was in a weird spot yesterday, but, um, uh, John Prine who died last year, which was my favorite songwriter of all time. Um, Prince and Tom Petty. Like those are the ones that like, like Tom Petty, like put me on my knees. So did Prince, you know, cause it was, mm-hmm. it was one of those things. But, uh, I, I think it's just people's lack of empathy for, for, you know, we live in a world now where no one wants to give anybody a reason to grow. Right. You, you live in, we live in a world where, listen, like I said, I've said this in three episodes now, and I know I'm talking a lot and not letting you guys talk, but, um, there's a like difference it. in, there's a difference in cancel culture and, and somebody getting what's coming to them. Someone who does bad things, that's getting what's coming to you. Um, if someone or like a comedian or something said something in 1985, when it was perfectly okay to say it and you bring it back up in 2020, like they said the shit yesterday, that is cancel culture. Mm-hmm. And that's not mm-hmm. okay. That's not, that's not giving anybody any room to grow because when they said it, it was okay to say it. Mm-hmm. And now it's not okay to say it anymore. You know? So like, that's the thing with that is like, but you know, people, it, my, the, sorry, my overall general point is have empathy for people who have messed up in the past. You know, listen, if somebody murdered somebody, if they fucked around with kids, that's a different ball game. Right. right. You know, f- fuck them. May they burn in hell forever. If you're you a know? man and you beat a woman, uh, yeah, I'm you deserve you that too. Uh, yeah, to if, fucking yeah, burn. If you, yes. if you ever, if you ever abuse a woman in any way, you're a piece of shit and I hope they put you under the jail. Um, but yeah, so that's my thing is, is the overall empathy of, of people who are dying. Sorry, Paul, I interrupted your DMX story. No, no, that's, that was literally the damper of my weekend. So other than that, it's Saturday today. Um, you better get yourself a ghost tonight. Celebrate. Hot God. I fucking hotghost.com, dude. I'm going to watch like ghost stories tonight and hope that I can have like wet ghost dreams. In high school, loose ghosts.com. In high school and college when people would kids, students would doze off like that, that head nod, we call it docking. It'd be like a ghost trying to like fuck their head. Oh, dude. Hey, so real quick, uh, should we go into John reads the mail? Then <laughs> are we going to go into John the shot? Oh, I got, so anyway, I got, I got one gripe. I, I, I'm, <laughs> oh, we're God. not going to get to, we're not going to get to anything I had written down. I didn't have the virginity thing written down. I just, I was, I knew that photo of my nephew was great. That so, was, um, so do the gripe. I'm going to check this roast. <laughs> No, John's going to come in later and be like Clorox, <laughs> <laughs> Clorox and semen. Um, <laughs> no, John's got to be around for the gripe. So, um, uh, well, well, we'll here's we'll, another, we can thank our next, uh, you know, sponsor here. Uh, thank once you to again. our next sponsor, um, me, uh, for helping fund this podcast. We appreciate, uh, we appreciate all me's help. God, um, you look great. Thank you very much. Um, hey, what the fuck's up with your hallway back there? It looks like it's trashed. What's going on? Playroom, dude. Come on, get your fucking kids to clean up, bro. That's a blanket. There's a dinosaur. There's probably some uh, hamburger down there. Who knows? I want to congratulate you on getting a chair and a desk, though. Yeah, that's man. a big my boy wife, move. My wife made me a big boy. Well, listen, when we do the podcast at my house, I have a, a huge desk with all my studio set up and everything. This sure. is a it's a small it's small. This is like a quaint version. Um, and there will once I leave here tomorrow to go to Florida, there'll be nothing on here. Uh, there's nothing that's gonna stay. 
stay here. All this stuff has to come with me. So it's just going to be an empty desk basically sitting uh, on the edge over here. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start this gripe because I know John's going to come back soon because he has no idea what he's doing. Let's bring him cooking. in midway so he has no idea what we're even talking about. You better watch out. You better be nice. Or you might find yourself in Zach's gripes. Okay. This is a pet. This is a lifelong. People ask me what my pet peeves are all the time, like in interviews, and I can never answer them because I can never really remember them. Um, I got plenty. <laughs> I was at a restaurant last night and I held the door open for two for two ladies. I and like waited for them like they were like they were gentlemen. At least, at least uh, I'm, I'm from the south. I'm a gentleman. They were at least 10 steps behind me. Okay. And I waited for them. I just waited. All my people were out the door and I held it. Oh, open. I have a feeling I know where this is going. And just nothing. Not a thank you. I said, I go, Hey, I go, you're I welcome. Literally, no, I said, I go, do I have a vest on? And she was like, what? <laughs> I go, do I, am I wearing a vest? And I started like going like this. And she goes, no. And I go, that's cause I don't fucking work here. So next time I'm going to slam the door on your fucking head is what I'm going to do. I go B. I go, listen, I don't have to hold the door open for you. I go, you right. can at least like nod. I don't even care if you say thank you. If you even give me like a, listen, dudes can't say thank you to each other when we hold the door open for each other. I get it. Then you got to, I don't know. Like I, I say, say, if somebody's holding the door I open for me, do. I'm like, Hey, thanks man. Appreciate I it. I always do. But we live in a mat. We live in a masculine culture. Our toxic masculinity of this podcast is that one commenter said. Um, so anyway, you what? can't even give me a head nod. Oh, you saw that comment where the person was like, oh, the, the toxic masculinity that oozes off this podcast is appalling. That's probably, I think it was on the Bigfoot episode. Um, I so, hate that person. So, oh, I, 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 I love trolling in the comments. So, um, and she was like, <gasps> I was like, yeah, I go, give me a nod. Give me like a high five, yeah. a handshake, oh, whatever. Like, I don't work here. Like, it's not my job to hold it. And listen, holding the door open for somebody to me is like the nice way to do it. I don't need... I don't need the appreciation for doing it, but like no. a, but like a shout out would be nice. Like, Oh, what's up? Thanks. Or just a head nod. I'll take whatever. But I, but I, I, I'm normally, I get so angry that I'm not quick on my feet with the humor and literally. The oh, first I just th say you're welcome. If they don't say thank you, I'm I like, say oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. I say you're welcome out loud all, all the time. time. I was very yep. proud of myself of being, of literally, <laughs> as soon as she walked out the door, I go, do I have a vest on? <laughs> you, you're like, I'm on it. You look down, you're dressed like Joff Tate from Queens Rank. You're like, fuck, I do. You know I mean? Damn it, I, I do have, have a vest on. on. God damn it. I'm an <laughs> Operation Mind Crime here in Outback. No, that's that's a big pet peeve of mine too. Like, <laughs> hey, just a simple, oh, hey, thanks. Like, even just if, even out. if, even if you run, even if the person runs up, holds the door themselves for the people behind them and you get to go in. Hey, thanks for holding that. And I'm guilty of like, I hold the door open. Like, like somebody can be across the parking lot. You're standing there for five minutes. I do. I do. All you're the time. stopping traffic for everybody. You're like, no, no, come on. I you, do too. Come on. Especially, especially if they're old people or especially if like they have any sort of handicap. Of like, course. They can be like getting out of their car. And if I see them walking towards the door and I've done it several times where it's backfired on me and they've like walked right by me and gone to a different place. <laughs> Segura, dude, Tom Segura had one of his skits. He's like, you know, you try and be courteous. You hold the door open for somebody handicap. And they're like, I don't need you to do that. Okay, motherfucker, Stumpy, <laughs> you fucking knob the door off. Like, right. it's the best because it's like, dude, you're just trying to, like, you know. human civilization. Just be courteous. Just like, be courteous, man. That's all. That's all. Just be be like a be like a just like a generally nice person. Like, that's all I really care about. Um, and the other thing, yeah. the only other gripe I had was uh, we were at the park the other day and somebody's dog ran up to me, and I didn't see I didn't see the person whose dog it was, and then finally I uh. I ran up, they, they, they kind of run up and they, you know, they're doing like, Oh, Hey, hey oh, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And it was like, well, dog wouldn't be a mean. The dog was like super chill. And I go, um, I go, yeah, I think I got your dog. He goes, Oh no, I'm his human. I would and have burnt the park to the ground. I said, I go, I thought like he didn't hear me. And I was like, oh. no, I, oh, is this your dog? I have he your goes, dog. No. He goes, no, I don't. I, I like, oh, we don't own animals. And I go, I do. I said, I own a fucking rabbit. His name's Snuggles. He's at home right now. He's mine. I own him. I got also own a dog. We don't own an... <sighs> I'm his human. Right. Until that animal can get in a car or order Uber Eats, someone has to properly own and manage that animal. I Did hope you wrap dog... the leash around this guy and whip this guy <laughs> in the park? I hope this dog 
I hope this dog pees on this man while he's sleeping. Honestly, right. this man. Or like, hey, you're my ghost. property, bitch. Like, this, you're my human. This yeah. man deserves to be peed on. That's all I'm saying. That was my. Oh. That was my only two gripes. I'm his human. I'm his human. Jesus, that's worse than the woman that went down on a tree. <laughs> went down on a tree. All right, John, put your Stop shaman hat on. Out. Take your shirt off, and uh, let's do some John the Shaman. Let's let's read some. Let's let's help some people out. John the Shaman, keeping you on track. All you gotta do is touch his big old sack of mail. John Shaman, you better change your last name. Johnny Shaman. Johnny Shaman. The Shab Wow. All Johnny right. So, Shab- by the way, shout out to J.R. Moore for the greatest song ever that yes, he came up with for John yes. Shaman. We actually got a bunch of messages for people that wanted that to be a ringtone and Paul Reads the News. So okay. we should hey. make ringtones. Hey. I need a song. All right, so- I need my own song. <laughs> we need to have a gripe section where for we have, we put yes. you on a timer. Zach gets one minute to gripe about whatever he wants, real quick, and then it's over. That's the timer. Right. Like how Dude. like how they do on, like how they do on ESPN, like the one minute clip. Yes. All right, yeah. Zach, you get to gripe about everything Pardon for one minute, and then you're done. Yeah. Pardon the interruption, dude. That'd be great. And then you guys, every time you every time you agree with the gripe, you hit a ding button. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> Go All ahead, right. John. So here, here's a here's a here's a dream right here. Oh no. I'm just going to, uh, I, w- I go through and read them to make sure there's nothing outrageous. And a couple of them I couldn't read. I needed a shower afterwards, but here's one right here. <laughs> I had another crazy dream. This is a, di- this is the person that same person, week, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna, yes. I okay. think, I, I hope you're I not going to say their names though. Cause it has to stay in the house. No, right. Right. Okay. I had, another, reasons at this damn. Point. Yeah. I had another crazy dream. Yes. I am worried about myself. I dreamt I was jailed in a Mexican prison, but managed to escape. As I was running, this lady said we could go through her garden as the police never go this way. And as I ran through the garden, chameleons attacked me. I woke up at this point. Yes, I think I need help. Just keep being awesome. And this email is from John at John at Silver yeah. <laughs> I have never <laughs> had any type of animal chase me in a dream. So here's okay. Here's I my have. first. Did this? Do you think this person had any? With the way we talk on this podcast, do you think they ran through this, you know, garden and thought about well, fucking that, anything in the garden? It all goes back not. to what we talked about before. We, you, if you think about something, you talk about ghosts or tree sex or whatever, you're gonna go to bed subliminally thinking about it. Maybe I have not woman, thought about fucking a cucumber since we started recording this oh, podcast, John. Dude, I can't stop. Well, that's unfortunate, Paul. Um, <laughs> right. Paul, have you never had a fucking eggplant in your bed? So- <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> okay. So, so give am- me, give me, give me the, uh, c- cause you guys, you guys just, just word jizz all over this thing after it comes uh, out. What, <sighs> what was the, um, give me the, the premise of the dream again. All right. She was in a Mexican prison. Got it. So not real nice. Uh, <laughs> as she was, as she escaped the prison, an old a lady helped her cut through this woman's garden to evade the police. Okay. Then as she ran through the garden, chameleons attacked her. And then she woke up. So it feels like she's maybe like, I feel like maybe that she is in like, like some sort of relationships that she doesn't want to be in. Because this is the same person that was fighting in a, in a war torn country, isn't it? I would have to look at the notes. Okay. I feel like maybe that this dream means that um, you need a vacation. Mexico that comes in. Right. Right. Mexico is but the vacation. It, but you need the vacation without the person. Right. Because that that's the prison you're being that's trapped in. the prison in. that you're in. You're okay with being in Mexico. It's the prison that you don't like. I hope they and speak this Spanish. This is why I need um, a doctorate. I need an honorary degree because I'm really now good the, at this. The chameleons though. What are the lizards? Maybe kids? maybe this girl maybe this girl kids? Is in maybe kids? maybe this girl is in a relationship with a man but she actually it really is into women. Maybe she's really into chameleons. So the chameleons or, or maybe actually, she's into chameleons. Maybe she's into like international spies who can be anything. The chameleons could be her sexuality that she's been running against, running from, but realizing she's supposed to be running towards it to be happy. I agree with John. So we and John, listen, me and John have figured out your dream. No, thanks to Paul. Um, what we've done is, so 
you are in something that you don't want to be in and you need a vacation out of it. The prison is the relationship that you're in. Mexico is where you need to go on vacation and whatever you're running from sexually, you need to run towards. God, God, I'm good at this, man. <laughs> we're so good at this. And this one, this one hit close to home. I don't, it just, this is literally, <laughs> literally hit so close this, to home as he is, was writing it. This is, this is from a lunatic clearly. Yeah. All right. So this, this email starts with, Hey, don't tell Zach I'm setting this in. It's from Bethany. Uh, no, so, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay. All right. so I had this dream just the other night. I went to donate blood with a few of my friends. We arrived at this warehouse and it was full of children donating blood, which doesn't happen. So we immediately knew something was wrong. We walk around the warehouse a bit, snooping around, and we come across this room filled with body parts and jars and all these coffins. We go to leave, and the people running the warehouse catch us and lock us in the treehouse. God damn it. One by one, my friends start to disappear, so the last of us just begin to work <laughs> on a plan to escape. Eventually, I am the only one left, and I summon Beetlejuice to help me escape. He shows up in the snake form, just like the scene in the movie, and kills everyone. I escape, but not before I morph into Wednesday Adams. Then I woke up. Strangest dream I've had in a really long time. Uh, side note, what was the craziest dream you had before this? Back to the story. Especially considering I haven't watched Beetlejuice or the Adams Family in probably years. Thank you. So give me the general consensus again. She's in a warehouse with a bunch of friends going to donate blood. Finding body parts. Body, body parts. They all, they run to, they try to hide in a tree they house. Get caught. They get caught one by one. She's the last one there in order to escape and get from fight these bad people. She has to summon Beetlejuice, which hopefully she called him three times. Otherwise the stream's not possible. And he killed everyone. Then she woke up. Did this person actually say, don't tell Zach I'm sending this in? No. Uh, <laughs> you know that that yeah. I was going to really wonder about my wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> although my wife's never seen Beetlejuice, so she would have no idea. Um, John, I'm gonna let you. Yeah, dude, my wife's never seen hardly uh, anybody. Yeah, I mean, I I'm think gonna let John whole, and Paul take this one. Actually, I don't. I I feel like that maybe. All right, so you need to get out. Of, so you need to get out of your relationship. You need to go uh, <laughs> donate blood somewhere. What the fuck? Well, okay. I think everything right now with COVID, everyone's with needles and all these shots, vaccines, all this craziness. There's that fear already, the paranoia. Where yeah. oh my god, if I get this vaccine, I'm gonna get. Uh, tracking ships, and I'm going to uh, Haley's Comet to suck off aliens, whatever. So people have this craziness already in their head where they're kind of like, oh, God, there's this fear. So they go there, they get with their friends. Me, I don't like needles. One of the reasons I don't have tattoos. Now, well, I get shots and stuff, obviously, but I just don't like needles. So my fear, I kind of resonate with her. I'm like, man, I maybe my nightmare with needles there will be body parts, people that died. Side story of myself. When I had to get my first tetanus shot, my mom had to hold me in the chair because I was squirming too much. Like I was like, I wanted to literally kill everyone at 25. So I, yeah. I was 31 and I just <laughs> could not take it anymore. Um, so I, I get where the fear comes in with medical stuff. Needles. I, I'm the same way. So when I was a kid, little side note, when I was a kid, my, um, I don't, I'd have to ask my mom how old I was, but, um, I, um, 13. No, you me call my mom right now. No, don't call your poor mom. Should I call my mom right now? Don't call your mom. Hold on, I'm gonna call. She's my like, mom. You, oh, okay, she's like, she's like, you guys talking about this goddamn ghost again? No, yeah. when I was it was so when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, my um, I don't remember how old I was, but my my pee hole was too. This is a true story. Was too. What sm- in the I'm dead fuck? serious. How? Where is this going? I'm dead serious. Hold on. I w- I, w- I was my my pee hole was too small. Hold on. What they do? Stretch it out? No. What was it like? Paper hey, did your mom know you got- hey, hey, you're live on the podcast right now, but I have a question. What? How old was I when I had to when they had to strap me down and open up my pee hole more? You were. Let me see. Were Tw- Twenty-six. Five? five. I think so. Yeah, because you were you were still in. Um, no, you were four because you were still in. Uh, you know. Thank you, Zach. Okay, that's, that was Zach. another question. Hold right? on, no, no, hold on, hold she on. She can't hear you, Paul. I know, so I'm, I'm telling you to hold on. Okay, ask your mom okay. if she knew how old you were when hold you on. got blown. No, I'm not asking her. <laughs> okay, so I was. I, 
Oh, Jesus. So I was four or five, I guess. So my pee hole was too small when I'd go pee would burn really bad. And I, I, by the way, I hadn't gotten blown by this point. So it was not a VD. Right. Um, so by a human, so a ghost. dude, they, and they, by the way, I was awake when they did this, they oh, had God. to put me in a straight jacket. True story. My mom couldn't stay in the room because she said I was screaming so bad. They put me in a straight jacket and cut my pee hole open while I was wide awake. <laughs> Dude, so you talk about being afraid of medical things. Okay, I one hundred percent fall in that category. Hold on, because I was hold wondering on. why your pee hole looks so weird. My pee hole looks great. Hold on. Okay. Where do we go with this? Where do we go with this dream? So <laughs> hey, I, I figured this out, John. Actually, I figured this out. So well, I, I, go juice, back. I think Zach's pee hole looks like a didgeridoo now. Like it's just a didgeridoo, <laughs> hollowed out by. It's Beetlejuice <laughs> is my mom. Okay. All your friends are all the doctors. You were going to get your pee hole opened up more. And my, my mom killed all the doctors. Yeah. And but what's tree, weird though, the tree house, the tree house, clearly she listened to our, and tree Wednesday podcast. Adams. Yeah. Wednesday. Yes. Adams. Okay. Well, that's all I have for that one. That's, it's all, just, that's all I got. It's just weird how people do different stuff. <laughs> I love that. So far, the two people I've had on this podcast were, a talking about how I still go to a child's dentist who I called, and then my mom <laughs> to ask when I had my pee hole cut open. Hey, mommy, when did I get my pee hole cut open? <laughs> uh, here is another dream. Wow! Oh, wow! We got more. Okay. Yep. I was sitting on a wall with some friends, and we had some polo bits. I don't know if you've had them, but they are round bits with a hole in the middle. They look like a, a bit like a donut. I assume this person's from the UK because I know what she's talking about. But instead of the outside, we had the middle bits that looked like little pills. We were eating them, and everyone's head started turning purple. Then they exploded, and my friends were walking around with exploded heads. I have never taken drugs, even though it sounds like this is an acid trip. Please send your help. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take. Th- I'm gonna take this one away. All right. You love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because this sounds like a Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory dream. Augustus like, Gloop. This is some Augustus yes, Gloop type Yes, 100%. Stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. Violet go get, Yo, go get some fucking mints and pop those suckers. Like, or there's nothing wrong with that. That's try, a great dream. Or try acid for the first time. You know that, what I thought about the other day? I thought about... I've, you know, I, you guys know me, me and Paul are the same. I've never done a drug in my life. Um, I used to, but I know you I don't used anymore. to, but I don't anymore. Uh, I like, I think I would like, I'm at the point now in life where like, if, if I could put them in like pill form, which I know Chris Porter told me is a possible thing, I would probably try mushrooms. Do you know mushrooms are actually good if you microdose for like migraines? Yeah. I'm not I didn't know that. that until a Excedrin, couple years ago. Excedrin like, works fine too for me. Yeah, I guess if that's your thing. <laughs> one, of my friends told me, do- one of my friends told me when I was in LA the other day, she goes, it was usually just microdose and go out to Joshua tree and stay in an airstream. I go by myself. I go, this sounds like a sounds, stress dream. Sounds like you're waking up with your dick in the ground, man. <laughs> like <laughs> you're stretched up. out pee hole in the ground. I we wake up, I wake up asleep mushrooms. next to a bald Eagle dude. I'm like, what is happening right now? There's two ghosts humping your head. No, we should all take <laughs> mushrooms. We just do a podcast. <laughs> oh Jesus! Can you imagine? <laughs> it's just us staring at each other, dude. First, <sighs> off, first off, I'd be very interested to know what Paul and I would be like. But can you imagine John no, Guinieri nope, on mushroops? No, nope, no, one thousand percent. No, I'll be like. What if he f- becomes normal? What if he normals out? What? If, imagine what comes out of his mouth. On mushrooms, or goes imagine in what it. goes in it. <laughs> Yikes! Ghost cock. How, you got any more, John? You got any more? Dreams? Yeah, I, I actually got a, p- a piece of advice to. Is this life here. advice? Oh, okay. advice! I, see, yeah, John's I've been the, wanting this. Yeah, John's good with the dreams. Uh, me and Paul are better with life advice. We're gonna let yes. John do all the dreams. Yeah. All right. Here's the advice. This is actually kind of serious. Oh fuck! Over the last three, <laughs> ever, over the last, <laughs> over the last three years, my life has taken many turns for the worse health-wise and mental state-wise. I am now virtually a prisoner in my home and have very very little to look forward to. How do we keep pushing and keep getting through these difficult times? I'm glad to be alive, but every day gets harder. Thank you. Ooh. John, Zach, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I think you... I think... Listen, I always treat life like a game in a good way. 
You know, like if you watch, I'll tell you first off thing to do, and I'm not joking about this. Watch the last dance with Michael Jordan. You got to find a game within a game. You know, I, I look at life to go, okay, what's the next thing, right? What's the next thing to look forward to? And I know sometimes it can certainly feel like John's gone. Uh, sometimes that thing is a lamb roast that you've had in the oven all day. and you're But just he's looking to, forward to it all day. He's looking forward to it all day. Um, honestly, you got to find things to look forward to. You got to find, you got to make things to look forward to. You got to find a purpose. You know, I did a cameo the other day for a, a fan who we know. And I started talking about that, you know, like someone, someone needs you. Whether mm-hmm. you know it or not, and whether they voice it or not, you know, not everybody's good at voicing their opinion. So, like, when sometimes when you feel like people don't need you, you can be, oh, look at that, dude, that looks Damn, good. Bring that He's got some thyme and some rosemary on top of that. I dig that. Mm. So, so, you know, someone needs you. You know, someone needs you to be there for them, whether you think so or not. And and your story can help other people. You know, I think talking about it is the main thing. You know, I always talk about I'm a huge therapy proponent, even though I've never been. I'm a huge supporter of it, and therapists and psychiatrists. You know, and I, you know, there's the, the there's a difference between psychologists and psychiatrists. And um, you know, I I think that you know John needs a psychiatrist. <laughs> John needs a gynecologist. <laughs> You know, I think that you, you got to find things. You got to find things in this game of life to look forward to. You got to find the game within the game to keep you interested and keep, you know, listen, I have days like this, you know, I have days, listen, I have kids, you know, now that were five, just turned five and, and one that's about to be three. And, you know, being in a band that travels as much as we do, it's not easy on me anymore. So I got to mm-hmm. find things too, you know, to, to occupy my brain and occupy my time that aren't things that I used to do that, you know, were bad for me, you know, and not drug wise, but I had, I had other issues, you know? So it's like, I think you just, I think you just find that game within a game and realize that, that somebody out there needs you, whether they're, they're telling you or not. You get, yeah, no, I, I agree with everything Zach just said. Um, you definitely get, you know, I, I'm such a recluse sometimes. I love, especially after being on tour, I love coming home and I could stay in my house for a fucking week straight and yeah. not talk to anybody. That's my, like, cause this is my me. Zen place. Like when yeah. I come home, I like to make it light. I love taking a shit on my own toilet when I get home. That's my, oh, you've, it's your something to look forward to. Something to look forward to. No. So anyways, um, it's, it's hard because you get comfortable and you get, uh, into your own ways. I personally, like when I get like that, I like to just go for a drive. Like I'll go for a drive late at night sometimes at like 10 o'clock and I'll drive listen for two music. hours yeah, and dude. I'll listen to music for like two hours blaring either the heaviest metal shit I can listen to some hip hop, whatever. Uh, but that's the time for me to clear my head. Like yeah. I don't really have to worry about anything. Um, but day to day I've struggled with depression since I was 14 years old. Um, my day to day motivation is my daughter. Um, somebody needs you. Like my daughter, she needs me like, yeah. and that's what I, I, she needs me now when she's a teenager, she's going to get the fuck out of here. Um, but she needs me. And that's something that I look forward to. And I love the time that I get to spend with her Be this year, um, has been one of the roughest years I think of everybody's life with the whole coronavirus. Um, you have to find some kind of positive out of this. Um, I've, I've been, and Zach will say the same thing. I've been able to spend more time this year with my, with my daughter than I have in my entire career of touring of 14 years. So, uh, I'm sure Zach would say the same thing. So it's, uh, find, find what positive you can and, uh, get out and do even the smallest thing, you know, go to the store, throw on some headphones, listen to some music. Music's the biggest thing for me. I mean, if you're here every week, um, listen to us. Listen to us talk about we'll make nothing important at all. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm with Paul, like to me, like my kids are that thing, you know what I mean? But it, you know, a lot, of, I know a lot of people don't have that, but it's like, you got to just look forward to the next thing. Make, make goals for yourself, set them, try mm-hmm. to beat them. And if you can't beat them, try to get as close as you can. And, and if you fail, realize that the fa- failure isn't final, you know, that's, that's something that I've, I've kind of always lived with. Yeah. Um, uh, I just or, wish you would, I wish you would wear pants more. I mean, yeah. John, why don't you wear pants more? Um, I don't know, man. Like I like just let my stuff hang out. I just think it's it's always fair to uh the wind, the cold wind sticking your tits. The and uh, and they just found the um, people that John murdered. Yeah, yeah that, that he buried in his backyard. 
No, That's ja all our landscaping he's been doing his the last three weeks. weeks. <laughs> ja Rule's doing a show down the down the street, so that was his entourage pull through. Oh my god. <laughs> John, was that all your was that all your shaman stuff? Yeah, that, that was all good. There's again, guys, whoever keeps say, keeps saying the stuff in, I try pull it, it, listen, it tripled. It tripled over after the last episode. I love there, there's a ton, it, yeah. there's a ton in there that I haven't even really looked we'll at. Get to all wanna, of them too. Right. Yes, right. we will. Absolutely. Maybe I think we do this Patreon thing. I think I could do like once a month or twice a month. I'll literally buzzkill do like 20 of these at a given time. And we'll just go down a deep, dark rabbit hole. Paul and I were talking about doing an after show uh, after the Wednesday after we premiere. We're doing an after show with the with the main Patreon supporters, too, where you can just chat live with us in like a discord like or, yes. like a, or like a Twitch where all yep. of us are in there. They can chat. We can answer their questions live on here. And uh, all right. Anyway, that was John the Shaman. And Paul, yeah. it's your turn. Read the news. Paul reads the news. Paul reads the news. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a news um, thing too today. Hey, hey, oh. hey. <laughs> um, so did you guys see this thing about the rock? Potentially, I guess there was 46% of the people said that if the rock ran for president, they'd fucking vote for him. Yeah. Cause he's a celebrity. I, okay. Let me ask you a question. Would you guys either personally vote for Dwayne, the rock Johnson? No, because I would rather see him in movies. I'm not gonna vote for. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, first off, I'm not. I need to. I need to see someone's. Like I need to see someone's policy before I vote for him. That's like dude, like when like when <laughs> when 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 people are like, oh, if a woman wants for president, I'm voting for her. I'm like, dude, what if she, what if she's like a yeah. Nazi? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what if like you know, like why would you like when you vote for someone without knowing their platform? I will say this. Um, his positivity is uh, infectious as a human being. Hundred um, percent. I think that he would be a great president uh, potentially. Um, but no, I'm not voting for somebody just because they're a celebrity. Even though I love The Rock, I know Brent Smith would probably vote for him because that's Brent Fence, that's Brent Smith's man crush. So, um, I did see that though, and I th I don't think I don't think that he necessarily said he said he would, but I did see where he said if I ever do decide to, I would be happy to serve you as a country. You know, so I don't listen. I don't think that that's something he wants to do. Um, no. I, think it, I think it was him. I think it was him just being like, thanks for the nod, you know, like, you know, I think it means, was, yeah, I think it was him being courteous and, and thanking fans for like, you know, being like, you know, I love that he was like, you know, a, a, a muscle head workout tequila drinking dude be afraid. I yeah. thought that was really funny. That so, was funny. Yeah. I don't know if he would ever do it, but if he did, I mean, I would love to hear what, like, if, listen, man, how worse can it get? <laughs> How fucking worse can it <laughs> How get? How worse can it get, dude? I'll take anybody at this point. John, you ready for president? Tila Tequila. Oh, Would okay. you take Let's her as president? It can't get worse, I guess. Yeah. You, well, you guys are you're talking about with the uh, picking people. Just oh, if it's a girl, but I vote. Well, how about we just pick the best person? Because that airline was well, that hasn't happened. That, in a, that hasn't happened in a very long time. That I mean, this last this last election was idiot one or idiot two. Like there was no win in there. We were all yeah, fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but that airline put out that tweet say, hey, in the next couple of years, we're going to diversify our pilots and we're going to pick a lot more women and people of color. And a lot of the tweets backs were like, how about you just pick people who are going to be good pilots to land the fucking yeah, I don't plane? Care. I don't care. I don't care. What I anyone, don't care. I don't care if they're all, uh, dude, I don't care if they're all uh, Sudanese um, teenagers, as long as they're good I, pilots. Right. <laughs> I just yeah. want you to have good pilots. I don't need, I don't need, yeah, 100%. Your, I don't need your diversity when it comes to my safety. <laughs> yeah. No, right. Yeah. I'll take, I'll stupid. take, I'll take all black 19 year old women. If they're all better pilots, please. I, I, I freak out enough about flying. Like, I don't care. That was so, what a weird tweet to put out. Weird. That's like um, Burger King's women belong in the kitchen. Tweet. <laughs> Deshaun, Deshaun, it's still up, by the way. They haven't deleted it. Good Correct. for them. Deshaun Watson admitted that uh, there were sexual encounters with some of his uh, of masseuses. there were. Like, dude. My so here's my question with that. So he admitted that yes, there was they were consensual, but he did have sexual encounters with them. Do you think he's fucked, or do you think he's still going to have an NFL career after this? Here's where here's where Deshaun Watson is probably going to win this. The girl that came out, and you know me, listen, I I've talked about this before. I think there needs to be a show where if you're a victim of something, and and the person 
or if you admit, if you say you're a victim of punishment and the, and the person who, that you're accusing vehemently you get the punishment it, if they're wrong yeah you get the if you're wrong and it turns out if you take a, a, a polygraph and you're lying you have to get the punch and listen i'm the furthest thing from a victim blamer i hate fucking victim blamers um but if you're but you it, listen we live in a day and age where you can literally ruin someone's life and not be telling the truth and there's no going back on that right we've seen it happen over and over and over mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. so um Here's where his accuser, the first one, messed up. She came out and goes, remember this name. This is the name of a victim. Okay. First off, that's not true because this isn't about justice for you because you tried to extort him two months before this. By the way, I'm not a Deshaun Watson fan. Literally could give a fuck less. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Um, I am, a, 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 you know, when you try to, when you show your true colors first and you try to extort someone and blackmail them. And when that doesn't work, when he says, yeah, come out, it was all consensual. And then you say it was this, that's where to me, it, you're, it's clearly you have something to hide to, to this, to this person. You know what I mean? So like, you know, if he's saying it's consensual, uh, then, then may the truth come out in court, you know, like I, you know, I feel like, you know, if you try to blackmail somebody first, like it, it, it ain't about justice for you. Yeah, you're just you know out I mean? there. And also, yeah. if you try to blackmail somebody first, it it probably was consensual. One hundred percent. Like it probably was. And like, listen, take if, you know what? Take it to court. Let's see what happens. If it like, wasn't consensual, I hope he never even plays for the CFL. But <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't I, then to me, you're a piece of shit. You're but, a piece of shit. But 100%. also, but also. If you accuse somebody of it and it's not true and you're just trying to get money out of them, which this is clearly the case, you are also a piece of shit. Correct. That's my thoughts Correct. on this. Um, John, you have anything you want to add on that? No, I, no, I, I agree 100%. All, I just, all so 100%. Like, okay. I like uh, Nike ended up suing um, while well, having a case with Little Nas X and uh, over the Satan shoes. Did you guys see this? It's already settled. Yeah. It's settled because they were like, yo, we want no fucking part of this case. Like, yeah. this is straight up outlandish. So it was essentially a cease and assist. The company that made them had to buy back the 1000 How much were they? They were like $1,000, something. At yeah. market value or what, what those yes. people were selling back? What, what they what bought they them for, them they had for, to yeah. buy them back at. So, so $1,018. Uh, what does, if, what uh, if so you it, just don't send them back? Right. Exactly. I have a friend who has a pair of them. Why? Oh, he's a big shoe guy. He just, you know, listen, shoe guys are about hype, dude. It's, it's about I know. Hype. Yeah, it's not I about get it. Yeah, no. it's not, listen, first off, it was an ugly shoe. That song is an number ugly one. shoe. What? If you were, the song's number one right now. It'll be number one for the next couple of weeks. Well, the, the, the song's number one because of the shoe. Right. Really? It's not, it's not a good song. Would you do think. a lap dance for the devil, Zach? No. I would do a lap dance for Will Ferrell in his devil outfit from the Garth Brooks skit in SNL. Yes. Ooh, Fred's got slacks on the boulevard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would really do. I would do a lap dance for Will Ferrell anywhere, probably. Really, honestly. That's but, right. No, I, I the, the the song's number one because of the shoe because the song's trash. Um. And I like the, like I like Old Town Road. Like I I I was so one of those I. dudes that like I didn't hear that song for the first eight months. I'd heard all about it and I was like. It's kind of like Baby Shark, dude. I went two. This is a true story. I went two years without hearing Baby Shark. I'm so jealous. I still haven't heard the whole song. Baby I, Shark. No, I I had never even heard That's the, the melody. Whole song. I had never even heard the melody. I'd heard kids kind of maybe sing it, but I had never heard an audio version. I would anytime I was around, I'd be like, no, I don't want to hear it. So I so I you know I was really late on Old Town Road. I'd always heard people talking about it, and then I listened to it and I was like, all right, it's kind of catchy. <laughs> Like, so yeah, but like see, the thing is, is like he, when, when people ask him, they're like, Hey, like you have a lot of fan base followers. Like this is, why are you putting out something like this? He's like, I don't fucking care. Like he was so unapologetic about him. Like, but I love that. I love the flash. I love the fact of a gay black man going into the country world and just like pissing everybody off. Like, I love that. Just like, listen, I could care less about this shoe. I knew Nike wasn't involved from the jump. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, well, actually, when you told me the day that it came out, I I, I assumed they weren't because I work with people at at Nike and Jordan. So Mm -hmm. I understand that. But um, I also, you know, I, I like, I think pissing people off is fun just because I think people are too sensitive. But, um, 
you know, the, the fact that he, as a, as a gay black man went into the country world and had a number one country song, I'm like, Oh my God, just, That's pure. Pretty great. I love it. I loved it. But the, the truth is this song's number one because of the shoes. Cause this song is trash and I like Lil Nas X. So it's not, I'm not shitting on Lil Nas X. There's only one Nas and that's not it. Um, that's not it. So, all right. I got one last one. Um, I got one I'm, too. Oh, okay. Let me finish this. Uh, yep. so, uh, Travis Barker is the next victim to the Kardashians. I see. Okay. So my news falls in with Kardashians as well. Ah, perfect. Not same, okay. Not the same, not the same thing though. Okay. So you got the Courtney tattoo too. Did yeah, you? Okay. I got, that, I got, I got, I so Courtney that's what I was going to ask. So I, I feel like anybody who associates themselves with the Kardashian family, their career just goes down the shitter. Like Correct. Reggie Bush, uh, <laughs> Lamar, 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 Lamar Odom, Odom. Uh, you know, Kanye Bo- West might be the only person to come out of it unscathed and okay. What um, was the basketball player? Lamar Odom. Oh, Lamar and Odom, the other right? guy that Chris, dated. Uh, no, married her. Chris Humphreys. Chris, Chris Humphreys. 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 That's right. Tra- went right down, went down that. the shitter, like gone. So, I mean, Here's the thing. I, 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 I yeah. like trap. <laughs> Exactly. What's gonna- I like Travis a lot. Uh, Travis is one of the coolest people I've ever met. And uh, he's one of the most humble humans. And I like Travis a lot. Uh, I hope it works out. Cause I think he's, he's dating probably, I think um, the prettiest Kardashian um, and the most natural, the less shitty one. The, well, I said, so, okay, uh, we're going to, this is where like me and John disagreed last week. Oh, we're, I'm going to disagree with you. I've never shit on the Kardashians. I don't, I don't like, listen, here's why make your money. Now the mom, Mm, I'm a little Fuck jury her. out on the mom. Yeah, I'm a little jury out on the mom. I think she took advantage of her wife's or her daughter's sex tape. Okay, so yeah, the mom. I still jury out on the mom. I think her mom exploited the daughter with the sex tape. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was something edited out of here that I will, it will say was hilarious, but we had to edit it out. Um, so, but here's my thing. I don't shit on the cars. I think you, if you make your money, man, like if you can make millions and millions of, or billions of dollars doing what you do, good on you, man. Like I, I don't hate on people like that. And I actually <laughs> like the Kardashians. Like I, I've met, I met Kylie and Kendall a bunch. Um, when we were making Amaryllis, they were, uh, they live next door. The Kardashian house was next door to the house that we made the record in. And, um, they would be over there all the time hanging out with uh, the producer's son, Charlie. And, um, so yeah, I've met them. I, I think they're all great. Honestly, I, the, again, the mom to me is like a momager and I'm not a fan of that, but, uh, I shout out to Travis. If he's happy, whatever. Uh, listen, man, I, I don't know Travis that well, but you know, we've been around a lot of same people. The guy obviously falls hard when he does. And I think that's, I think that's cool, man. If that's what you're into, but, um, hey. Go ahead, John. If he's, if, he, if he's happy, then why, sh- why? Who are we to say? Anything also, he has like, also right. he has like so many tattoos anyway. It's like, happy what? for him. I'm just saying, everybody Dude. that has gotten involved with that family has Except a record. You're jealous? Except are for you Kanye. jealous? Except for Kanye has had a record of just going down the shit. Now, shore. Paul, it seems or, like you're either jealous of the, Courtney the or Travis. Si- on the flip side of that. Scott Disick was a nobody. And that guy is like one of the most famous dudes in the world now, but he was just rich, rich. Like he was white guy, rich. Yeah, that's true. He also uh, has one he of came the best, for money. He also has one of the best sweats companies of all time. Shout out talentless because hopefully they sponsor this podcast. Let's get that I sponsor. Have, I have probably 20 talentless hoodies. Like that's actually what I gave Kent for Christmas. I gave him like three talentless sweat sets. Like, I'm about uh, to get that. Okay. Pants I'm and hoodies. To, they're super you get that sponsorship. Thick. Dude, they're great. I love ta- shout out to talents. I love talents. So my news was again, and I don't shit on the Kardashians, but my news was, um, uh, Chloe Kardashian, um, was very upset that a photo got leaked of her, um, oh. where, that wasn't filtered. And she was said, not well, edited, wasn't edited. And the reason, by the way, still pretty, still pretty. Um, the reason she got upset was this high expectation that fans set for her to be perfect all the time. Now this is my gripe. And again, I don't shit on the Kardashians shout out to the Kardashians. Uh, I, it's not the way I, maybe I would run my family, but you know what? I'm not hating on anybody making their money. If you don't like that, uh, blow me. I don't care. Um, first you heard off, it, folks, you get to blow Zach Byers. <laughs> oh, okay. first off the, the expectations that fans set you guys set, Correct. They set that you created this perfection thing. So I don't want to hear this whining shit. Y'all created this. You want it. Listen, you wanted to be famous for being famous. You put yourself, when you put yourself out there like that and a photo gets edited, you got to take it on the chin. John, don't say anything. Uh, <laughs> you got to take it on the chin or wherever else on the face you want to take it. Right. Uh, Tramp stamp. 
Yeah. But you, you, that was you, you guys created that. You guys created this filtered body, this filtered look. You wanted to look a certain way. And to me, I, by the way, I think Chloe, like, I think even like Chloe before what, when she thought she was like overweight and stuff, I thought she was amazing. I thought she was beautiful. I um, think Kim's the, not the least attractive one out of all of them. I, I like, bro, Bruce. I, I gotta, I gotta, dis, I gotta disagree with that, bro. I'm, I dude, I Kim think K is, uh, Kim K is a, Kim K is a, calm 9.8. down over there, buddy boy. Kim K is a 9.8 bro. Um, no. So I listen, you know, uh-huh. yeah, me, I agree, John. I do agree that the Bob is kind of suspect, almost like too, too kind she's of like pimping out her family. Yes, she's pimping correct. out her family. Like she had never like done anything really. Pimp my other family, than, dude. Other than being married to Robert Kardashian, like that was kind of her thing. And then when she found the niche of the sex tape, it, that's what it feels like to me. I could be wrong, but again, I'm not. I don't hate on the Kardashians, but I, I got mad at the whole like, oh, fans set these expectations. Well, like first off, you created this. You created this filter. Did you thing. like that sex tape? I actually, I haven't seen it. That's the Ron John, I right? I've seen a lot of Ray, Ray J. J. Ron, Ron John, John, brother. The surf shop. Yeah, she was getting banged yeah. out at a Ron John surf <laughs> shop. Tahaba Breeze and Tahaba Johnny over there. The only celebrity sex tape I've ever seen was the Pam Anderson, uh, Tommy Lee one. Really? Yeah. The no, Kim yeah, Kardashian one's pretty all right. The who? That, the Kim Kardashian one's pretty all right. Yeah, but that was kind of pre hot Kim K, wasn't it? No, I mean, she. That, was- uh, Paris Hill one well, is not bad, right? I mean, that's the. I've never it? seen it. Is that the one that looks like Zero Dark Thirty, where that's it's like a where green she's just, yeah, yeah. Right. where she's just it's on her phone all the time, getting banged out? Yeah, it looks right, like, like yeah. yo. The, I've never seen it, but I was like, you know, seen like the still screenshots of it or whatever. It looks like they're about to go kill Osama bin Laden. Like no, it's on a, like dark screen. <laughs> it looks like they're <laughs> fucking ghost hunters, bro. I would not be able to watch that. No, ghost like, spinners, you know, we're, baby. We're, 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 we're yeah. coming in. We're about to. We're about to come inside. We're coming in. All right. Uh, uh, we have. We have. Kick in the door. Kick in the door. All right. Our eyes on the target, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> um. No, I don't know. We anyway. are never getting sponsors. <laughs> that video is like Call of Duty with like an added extra like butt fucking scene. Like that's all it is. I'm just like, dude. Like, oh uh, god, just a wasted opportunity. The production value of that is such garbage. <laughs> Anyway, this has been episode nine of the Seemingly Unknown podcast. If you have advice, if you have dreams that you need John the Shaman to uh, it re-engineer, un-engineer, if you will, the email is suplifeadvice at gmail.com. Paul, what's the email? Uh, suplifeadvice at gmail.com. That is suplifeadvice at gmail.com. We'll put it down here. Um, for, on, on, on behalf of John Guaneri, Polly Tamale, and myself, thank you for tuning in. Um, it keeps getting bigger every week. We get more listeners every week. Thank you uh, for listening to our absolute insanity. We appreciate it. One day, I promise we're going to rein this in uh, and, and try to have some sort of uh, scheme to it. I didn't get to anything that I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> Not, literally nothing on my list we talked about. This was a good one. These are the best ones, though. The, so The ghost cocksucking really threw it for a loop. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we hope you guys are well. We hope you're safe. Um, we're recording this one on Saturday, so sorry if we missed any news that's going to happen between now and Wednesday. And uh, we will see you soon. Bye, nerds. <laughs>